Good morning. I am Dr. Vaibha Goyal from Tithankar Mahavir Medical College and Research Center, Muradabad. Thank you, MRI Teaching Course, for giving me this opportunity to present my paper on role of ultrasound elastography in evaluation of rotator cuff tendons in patient with shoulder pain and its comparison with magnetic resonance imaging. Most common cause of shoulder pain are rotator cuff disease, accounting for 85% of the cases. Other causes are acromioclavicular joint disorder and glenohumeral joint disorders. Rotator cuff disease has been classically described as a progressive disorder of the rotator cuff tendons, which begins with an acute tendinitis, then progresses to tendinosis with degeneration and partial thickness tear, and finally resulting in full thickness rupture. Among the rotator cuff tendons, supraspinatus is the most common tendon involved in tendinopathy or tendon tear, followed by a combination of a supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendon. Ultrasound B-mode imaging and MRI are currently applicable tools for pre-operative planning and post-operative monitoring of the rotator cuff repair and are mainly used to assess the tear size, gross structures and the presence of the fatty degeneration in the rotator cuff muscles. Low cost, wide availability and scan dynamics are the advantages of ultrasonography. MRI has multiplanar capability which provides greater soft tissue information and is proven to have both high sensitivity and specificity for evaluation of rotator cuff tears, but it is costly and have limited availability. However, altered material properties of the muscle or tendon cannot be assessed adequately by the above modalities, which is why sonoelastography may add further knowledge to conventional shoulder imaging. Since tendon quality is a prognostical factor for rotator cuff repair, information about tendon stiffness could be beneficial for the surgeon. Shear wave elastography method is based on so-called shear waves generated within the tissue by using a conventional ultrasound wave that interacts with the tissue and it uses horizontally directed shear waves that propagate through the tissues. The velocity of these shear waves can be quantified by using ultra-fast algorithm to evaluate tissue composition and elasticity. Aim of the study To study role of ultrasound elastography in evaluation of rotator cuff tendons in patients with shoulder pain and its comparison with magnetic resonance imaging. Objective of the study To evaluate morphology of rotator cuff tendons in patients with shoulder pain on higher resolution B-mode UHG and MRI to evaluate tissue stiffness of rotator cuff tendons, supraspinatus and infraspinatus on ultrasound elastography in patients with shoulder pain, to compare grayscale ultrasound and elastography findings of rotator cuff tendons with MRI in patients with shoulder pain, and to assess the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound elastography in the evaluation of rotator cuff tendons in patients with shoulder pain. Selection of the patients, inclusion criteria. All patients complaining of shoulder pain with suspected rotator cuff disease referred from orthopedics department to department of radio diagnosis for shoulder MRI. Exclusion criteria, patient who had undergone previous surgery on rotator cuff tendons or shoulder joint, patients having absolute contraindication for undergoing MRI, patient with grossly calcified tendon, and patient who is unwilling to give consent or uncooperative push. Metal and materials. This is prospective observational study of 20 patients. Prior written consent after proper explanation of procedure will be obtained from the patients. MRI examination will be performed on 1.5 Tesla MRI machine, Siemens Magneton Evento Tim Dot system using shoulder coil with the following protocols. Axial proton density fat saturation, coronal oblique T1 fast spinico, coronal oblique T2 fast spinico, sagittal oblique T2 fat saturation on stir, and coronal oblique T2 fat saturation. Conventional MRI images will be obtained first followed by grayscale ultrasound and ultrasound elastography of rotator cuff tendons of shoulder. Radiologist performing ultrasound will be blinded towards the results of MRI. MRI findings will be assessed for each tendon and will be recorded as follows. Tendon degeneration showing increased signal intensity on T2 weighted images in coronal planes. Partial tear showing focal areas of tendon discontinuity with T2 bright fluid signal. Full thickness tear showing focal or complete discontinuity of tendon fibers from articular to bursal surfaces. Ultrasound and ultrasound elastography will be performed using Accusan S3000 Siemens Medical Solution device using Siemens 9L4 Linear Array Ultrasound Probe as per shoulder protocol. B-mode ultrasound of tendon pathologies will be categorized as follows. Tendinosis without tear showing hypoechoic areas with loss of fibrillar architecture in the presence of intersubstance clefts, tendon thickening, or fraying will be considered as tendinosis. Partial tear includes bursal, articular, or intrasubstance discrete hypoechoic defects that will not involve the full thickness of the tendon. And the full thickness tear, which includes discretely marginated hypoechoic defects that will involve the full tendon thickness. We will perform the shear wave elastography of supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons 
using acoustic radiation force impulse pulses in long axis only. Parametric shear wave velocity estimates within the region of interest will be derived automatically from raw radio frequency data by software implemented in the S3000 scanner, virtual touch imaging quantification and will be displaced as colorized map. MTIQ provides an image based assessment of shear wave velocity using color coded scales. It will be used to classify tendons on the basis of their stiffness. Tendons will be classified into three types depending on the stiffness. Low rigidity showing blue color, intermediate rigidity showing turquoise to yellow and high rigidity showing the red color. Sample will also be taken from any area of abnormal softening in the above tendons and the shear wave velocity will be measured in meter per second or kilopascal in the dynamic range for shear wave velocity measurement will be set as 0.5 to 10 meter per second. This MRI image is showing the normal supraspinatus tendon. On USG, the supraspinatus tendon appears smooth. And on elastography, the tendon show high velocity and a map of red scale suggesting normal step tendon. This is the T1 fat set coronal image and this is the PDFS sagittal image. Near the footprint, the supraspinatus tendon appears bulky and shows signal alteration. On ultrasound, the tendon appears mildly bulky. On elastography, the tendon shows reduced velocity near the footprint in the range of 5.27 to 5.32 meter per second and a color map of near green scale. This is the T1 term coronal image and this is the PDFS sagittal image. High signal fluid intensity is noted in the anterior and middle fibers of supraspinatus tendon. The posterior fibers of supraspinatus and anterior fibers of infraspinatus tendon shows tendinosis. <coughs> On USG, at insertion there is full thickness partial with tear of anterior and middle supraspinatus tendon fibers. Anechoic fluid can be seen at the insertion site of supraspinatus tendon suggesting full thickness partial width tear. On elastography, it shows reduced velocity in the range of 3.47 to 4.64 meter per second in and around the region of tear and a color map of near blue scale. Now the results. This table shows the frequency of MRI in patients with shoulder pain compared with ultrasonography and elastography. The tendinopathy were found in 9 patients on MRI and 6 patients in ultrasound and 7 patients on solar elastography. The partial thickness tear was found on 5 patients in MRI, 5 patients on ultrasound and 5 patients on solar elastography. Full thickness tear was found on 6 patients on MRI, 5 patients on ultrasound and 6 patients on solar elastography. This table is showing a degree of agreement of MRI with both ultrasonography and solar elastography in patients with shoulder pain. The correlation coefficient between the MRI and the UHG is 0.67, which is statistically significant. The co correlation coefficient between MRI and sonal elastography is 0.79, which is also statistically significant. And the correlation coefficient between the sonal elastography and the ultrasound is 0.85, which is also statistically significant. This table shows the performance of ultrasonography and sonoelastography for diagnosis of rotator of tendinopathy and tears in relation to and in agreement with findings of MRI as a gold standard. On ultrasonography, the sensitivity for tendinopathy was 83.33%, for partial tear for 80%, full thickness tear it was 83.33%, the specificity for tendinopathy was 92.86%, for partial Thickness tear it was 93.33%, for full thickness tear it was 100%. The positive predictive value for tendinopathy was 83.33%, for partial thickness tear 80% and for full thickness tear 100%. Negative predictive value for tendinopathy was 92.86%, for partial thickness tear 93.33%, for full thickness tear it was 93.33%. On sonar elastography, the sensitivity for tendinopathy was 85.71%, for partial thickness tear 100% and for full thickness tear was 100%. And the specificity for tendinopathy was 92.31%, for partial thickness tear 93.33%, for 
for full tenure state was 93.33%. The positive productive value for tenure empathy was 85.71%. For partial thickness rate 83.33%, for full thickness rate it was 85.71%. And the negative productive value for tendon empathy was 92.31%, for partial thickness rate 100%, and for full thickness rate 100%. And the accuracy in case of ultrasonography for tendon empathy was 90%, in case of partial thickness tear it was 90%, for full thickness rate it was 95%. And in case of sonoelastography, the accuracy for tendinopathy was 90%, for partial thickness tear 95%, for full thickness tear it was 95.24%. And the p-value according to the Fisher exact test were significant. And in, according to this table, the sonoelastography slightly, uh, slightly have better sensitivity than the ultrasonography. Conclusion. Ultrasound elastography is an ultrasound based new technique permitting qualitative visual and quantitative numeric measurements of mechanical, mechanical tissues properties and for assessment of differences in tissue stiffness. It could be used as an objective imaging implement for early diagnosis of tendinopathy prior to any detectable alterations in thickness or echogenicity of tendons on B-mode UHG. As sometimes it is difficult to detect tendinopathy by conventional B-mode UHG as it presents with same echogenicity as the surrounding healthy tissues. Other pitfall of B-mood ultrasound is anisotropy. Tendons appear echogenic when the beam is perpendicular to long axis of the tendon, resulting in an erroneous hypoechogenicity which may be mistaken for tendinosis or partial tears. The major advantage of sonoelastography is that it can provide both quantitative and qualitative analysis about tissue elasticity, offering greater sensitivity for deeper structures and better spatial resolution then manual palpation and can be used to differentiate between healthy and pathological tissues as pathological tissue is softer than normal tissue. The main finding in this study is that sonoelastography could detect areas of tendon softening in case of tendinopathy as regions of altered color changes within normal tendon. Sonoelastography also showed better correlation with MRI than conventional USG in detection of different rotary cuff lesions and sonoelastography improved sensitivity when added to conventional USG in detection of rotator cuff tendinopathy and rotator cuff tears. The limitations of the study was that the sample size was small and the sonoelastography is highly operator dependent and manual compression may affect reliability. These are my references. Thank you.